Thank you, uh, thank you, Andy, and uh, good morning, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here and to uh, see you. And I'd like to uh, second uh, Doug Kelly's remarks about uh, what a, a, a debt of gratitude we have to all the hardworking people here who have worked in health many for many years and uh, continue to work in health and are shown the commitment to uh, come to this meeting to look at uh, the future and where things could go and how things can be made better. Um, Doug asked, who's uh, mining the store when uh, we're away? And I just wanted to uh, say that I'm really grateful. I've been married uh, 40 years to a wonderful person who has uh, brought me three terrific daughters and who herself while raising our family and staying home and maintaining a lot of the community and family, also works in public health and is working days and nights in H1N1 clinics uh, right now. And I certainly uh, thank her and all of the people in health, in public health, who are putting in that effort uh, so that we can meet and talk about the future. So, Andy talked about the uh, tripartite First Nation health plan and the importance of that plan for First Nations in British Columbia and for First Nations everywhere and for the governments of British Columbia and Canada. The plan recognized that things had to change. It recognized that change need to be made in the structure and administration and control of health services, but it also recognized that this was a journey that the two governments and First Nations needed to be on, and that we needed to work together under some principles that would guide how that future would unfold. And to that ex extent, the agreement set forward the following principles that are up on the slides. It said that the federal government, the provincial government, and the First Nations were committed to these principles, that the health system needed to give greater weight to cultural knowledge and traditional healing. It recognized the role and the authority of 203 First Nations of British Columbia. It recognized that they have a key part to play in the future, and that diversity had to underscore what we were doing. It recognized also that the system needed to be more effective and work better because the real test of our success is going to be how well we meet the needs of the patients and the clients and the people in the communities, not the needs of me or the administrators or governments, but the people who count on those services for their health and their health services. It also needed to say that the system, have a, the system of accountability had to be reciprocal. It wasn't a one-way street. It was an accountability where everyone was accountable to each other and accountable to our clients and our populations. And that we needed to have their trust and the trust of each other by having a system where decisions were open and information was shared. So I'm going to turn it over to Doug to talk a little bit about structure. 